gonna have no hair. Right? I told him he's my hero. That's my dude. Amen. Amen. God is so awesome. Amen. Amen. Let me thank the teachers uh, for, for what they do uh, Sunday in and Sunday out. Uh, sitting before uh, Ruby and Anessa this morning uh, made my heart glad. Uh, that Amen. Are reaching those that are small. Right. Amen. Amen. That's the easy assignment. For both of them to come and desire to be baptized, uh, that's the girls' club anyway. That's the only <laughs> reason. <laughs> and Judy is the other one. Because when I asked Anessa a question, she said, Did you? And I asked her a question, How you did? Did you know Jude's birthday is April 9th? <laughs> <laughs> They're sisters. Yeah. And, and it's beautiful that they, look, they come out of the bathroom again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the church right now. Amen? Amen. 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 And we all were like that. We had our, our road bars yeah. and we yes. ran with the yeah. age. Yeah, I think did. it's so wonderful to see it for the teachers who pour into them uh, individually and collectively for their parents who are raising them Amen. in the spirit and admonition of the Lord. It means a lot that this church uh, is carrying out God's will. And that's what made my heart glad. So glad this morning, sitting in front of them and talking with them uh, and listening to them uh, as they converse back and forth uh, with each other and ourselves. Shall we stand for the word of God? Amen. Amen. Let me again thank uh, Dr. Steve Stewart who filled in last week. Amen. 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 Uh, as he continues to grow. Uh, I talked with our next Cheryl about uh, the moment and I said, Steve reminds me of a rookie quarterback. Mm -hmm. And every now and then, Russell, unless you get them some rest, they won't be able to call the plays when it's their time. All right. All right. Amen. So I told All Steve, right. I encouraged him that you're going to throw interceptions, you're going to fumble them, but that's okay. Because you're going to more down, and we're going to put you in more games. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah, I know he did. Amen. 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 But it's a testament uh, to the truth that we should train each other up and to be prepared to move out the way. Mom, Dad, I'm not going to be here 80 years old trying to be scripture. I have enough time, 60 some time, to be scripture. <laughs> Come on, y'all. So I'm going to be here 95, stumbling over words, and you mad at me because I won't sit down. <laughs> now, here is going to yank me now. You ain't got to worry about that. She's going to pull me in. Touch yourself there. Amen. All right, Robbie. Come on, let's go to the word of Bobby. All right, Robbie going to back me up again. Praise God for him. All right, turn your attention to Matthew in the 16th chapter, and you'll find some familiar words, and Mom, baby, I like going into old wells and getting fresh water. Amen. Amen. There is nothing like, because God's word is inexhaustible, you can't exhaust it, Amen. and so we want to look at the 13th verse through the 20th verse, Matthew 16, 13 through 20. Matthew 16, 13 through 20. From the King James Version, thus saith the Lord. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say the Son of Man am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjonas, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charge he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. 
Amen. And for a brief moment, very brief, we will lift up the subject in a feeble attempt, identity. Who am I? Identity. Who am I? Find a name and say, neighbor. Who you be? Who you be? Find another name. <laughs> say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, Everyone here this morning, church, has what is known as an identity. Amen. From the time of early infant stages through the child years, we began or begun to form our own identity. There are no two people, zero, who have the same identity. Most of us have someone or a few people we admire bless you, look up to, imitated, and even dreamed we were like them. You know that to be true, and I know it to be true, because we most likely heard someone or others say, Kim, she is just like her mother. Or we heard them say, he is just like his father. There are even those who have the same name as their parents male and female. Mm -hmm. There is an old saying that imitation is the highest form of flattery. Mm -hmm. But no matter how good, Karen, the imitation is, it is not the imitator's identity. There's another old saying that often imitated, never duplicated. Because imitation is what someone does. Identity is who they are. Let me say that again. Imitation is what someone does. Identity is who they are. Mm -hmm. There are some people, Russell, who go through life imitating someone else instead of discovering and being their own identity. In the movie, Get On Up, <laughs> Chaz, someone caught that. Chaz uh, uh, Bozeman was on spot on uh, in the role he gave in a magnificent performance in capturing James Brown. It is well noted, listen, church, that after filming had ceased, production was complete, and editing was finished, Jay, Chaz remained in the character of James Brown for several months. It's duly noted. He, he even mentioned this in the interview. It is well documented he had to detox and rehab out of the character for several months and step back into his own identity. Oh. It is believed he was caught up, Arnett, uh, in an identity crisis trying to find himself, watch this, and who I am and not who James Brown was. But identity crisis, nor who I am, is not new. It's been around a long time, uh, Nisi, and, and this morning God has drawn our attention to the text read in our hearing uh, this morning. And first, let me uh, move the, the mouse, uh, the mouse, there we go, into the definition of identity. Identity establishes who uh, or what someone or something is. To, to, to recognize someone or something and say or prove or what the person or thing is. That's identity. Uh, the synonyms are single, uh, single out, to point out, to pinpoint, to spot, to pin down, to distinguish, to discover, to find, to locate, to associate, to link, to relate, to think of together, mention in the same breath, gives us the definition of identity. And so here are six quotes, there's seven total, one I'll use in the close, but here are six quotes about identity, uh, 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 Dr. Wilson. Don't let your struggle become your identity. That's right. Amen, Amen church. Amen. Don't let your struggle become your identity. Come on now. All of us 
struggle, but don't let it become who you are. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. 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 Don't let your I, I gotta stay there for a minute, Russell, because I'm familiar with this territory. Been there, done that, owned a t-shirt when my struggle became my identity, and mom, Betty, I lost who I really was and who God intended me to be. Don't ever let your struggle define who you are. And mold your identity. Number next. Some people aren't really all they post to be. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. I couldn't make it to that one out there. <laughs> yeah. Right there. Uh huh. Yeah. Some people yeah. aren't really all they post. That's right. Yeah. Now they've been saying that, Derek, since 1930. That's how they talked back then, but now it's relevant. <laughs> That's how we talk back then. They supposed to do that. Supposed to do that. Supposed to, yeah. to do that. Come on, somebody. I ain't have my grandma together always now. I believe in violence, Gail. Amen. I struggle every now with a verb and adjective, but it's okay. Some people aren't really all, all they supposed to be. At least I had to take my time with that one because I'm a big Facebooker and Instagram, all that Twitter and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Our identity, number, number next, Our identity should be so secure that when people walk away from us, they don't take us with them. Mm. <laughs> be careful who you pretend to be. Okay. You might forget who you are. That's <laughs> true. Number next, I don't have to worry about identity theft because no one wants to be me. <laughs> Comedians have a joke about strong people. You steal my identity, you ain't got nothing. <laughs> you are crazy, man. You can't charge nothing. You can't apply for nothing. Go on and be me if you want me. That's right. There ain't nothing here. <laughs> you might come and arrest you. When you accept, here's number last. When you accept the fact that your true identity includes being an overcomer, you will never settle for less than a miracle. Amen. 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 Let me move on before I get to my points of significance uh, and, and close this text. Prior to our text, we need to just uh, advise you what's going on. We find the Pharisees and the Sadducees in 16.1 who have come to Jesus, tempting and desiring him to show them a sign. Where the where's the nice nighters at? Signs and wonders. And, 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 and miracles, and, and, and if you weren't here, it's worth repeating, uh, the Chairman Banks and, 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 and Elder uh, Marshall brought up two excellent points that I just love and I've nursed them for some time uh, since they said these, that, listen, man can never schedule a miracle. Amen. He can't schedule a sign or one to tell you he's at a certain location, and if you're showing up, guess what? Nothing's going to change. Amen. You're going home the same way you came. That's right. And then what Elder Marshall said is that, you know, these, these preachers and false prophets start out well, and they're teaching Jesus and preaching Jesus, but when they change the doctrine to themselves, and they don't need the word or hear the, or give the word of God anymore, that's when it's dangerous yeah. and for us not to follow them. Amen? Amen. 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 So here we are uh, talking about, they ask Jesus for a sign uh, and a wonder. And some folks today uh, are just like that. They come to church for a sign yeah. uh, and a miracle mm -hmm. and a wonder. And it must be understood, Dr. Gillison, that when people who don't know uh, uh, who you are will challenge your true identity. Yeah. All right, maybe not challenge, but they will. They'll challenge, when they don't know who you are, they'll challenge your true identity. They want you to show them who you are by what you do. Yes. In this case, it will do us well to know, Cheryl, that even though the Pharisees and Sadducees came together, here's something, Joe Dina, that dropped on the radar, and I never understood, but I do see it happen. Folks who don't get along will team up when they don't like you. Amen. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah, they'll find common ground, even though they don't like each other. They stand for totally different things and religions and beliefs. And the Sadducees and the Pharisees are the same. That They don't even care for each other. The Pharisees, Nicole, believe in resurrection and angels. The Sadducees don't. But yet, when it comes to Jesus, the only common ground that they have is they want to get rid of him. Right. 
So don't be surprised when folks you know who don't like each other team up against you. But let me make it plain. It's the Jesus that's in you yes. that they Amen. don't like. That's right. Come on, dog. I want you to go out here fighting some folks. I'm like, you don't like me. That's okay. Pastor just said, no. It's the Jesus in you. <laughs> they had different beliefs and different opinions on the law and religion. It means they both had a common cause and they just wanted to get rid of Jesus. So they asked him to show us a sign from heaven, a miracle, a wonder. But the truth is, now this is, this is something you might want to write down and keep close to your heart. This is the truth. Signs, miracles, and wonders, many of which Jesus had already given, watch this skip, are only given to authenticate and call attention to the message Jesus was preaching. That's it. That's it. So when you hear signs and wonders and miracles and the good gospel is not being preached, you know it's false preaching. Yes. All right, let me go back and say it again. They asked him to show him a sign from heaven, a miracle or a wonder, but truth is signs, miracles, and wonders, many of which Jesus gave only to authenticate and call attention to the message, uh, the name of them, and watch this, uh, the truth of the matter is none of the miracles, none of the signs, and none of the wonders alone by themselves could have helped somebody never save a soul. That's right. Amen. 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 Why you say that, Pastor? That, that, wait a minute, Doc. I got something to ask you. Well, the word says that truth, the faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. It doesn't say miracles came. Amen. It doesn't say wonders came. It Preach doesn't it. say signs came. It says faith cometh by hearing. That's right. And by hearing the word of God. Miracles, wonders, uh, 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 alone, and, and signs never save anyone. It's the word that is uh, preached that is authenticating the miracle signs and the wonders that are given. All right, I know someone's watching on the video. You need to hear that. Jesus points to them, the signs of the time and their ability to discern them. Uh, they're able to discern the weather. Watch this. But they can't discern his coming. Mm -hmm. So Jesus calls them. Just, I like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so can you just call people who they are? He don't mix words or bite his tongue. Or, Maybe I'm not saying that. But, and I wouldn't even go out here just calling folk names today. Because the pastor did you know? I'm talking about Jesus. He, listen, my, my, my Ethel, he just called them wicked and adulterous generation, seeking a sign, and there shall be none given you but the sign of the prophet Jonas. This sign gives hope to the believer, but is, a, is an indication of judgment for the unbeliever who shall be judged by the risen Christ at his second coming. This morning we're talking about identity. Who am I? Close to our text. i got to hasten. The disciples had come to the other side. Whenever you're with Jesus, there's always the other side. Amen. That's right. Amen. Watch this and how this sets up, Russell. They had forgot to bring bread. Mm -hmm. And if you're reading it, right around verse 3 and 4, it's there. Jesus said to them, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, the disciples said to themselves, Is it because we have taken no bread? Duh. <laughs> Something's wrong with the conversation here. He's talking about the leaven of the Pharisees. They're talking about their stomachs. And most of the time when Jesus is talking to us, we get on the material side and the physical side and miss what he's saying to Amen. us spiritually. Amen. Amen. So he says to them, the disciples said to themselves, is it because we've taken no bread? And when you look at verses 8 through 12, you see the conversation uh, goes like this. When Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason among yourselves, because you have brought no bread? Watch this. Do you not understand, neither remember? And sometimes, church, when Jesus has already provided for us Amen. through a miracle sign and wonder, hello, we soon forget when we get caught up, watch this, Dr. Barry, on the other side. Mm. Amen. Amen. That tells me if Jesus took care of me on this side, come that's on, right. Come on, come on. It doesn't matter if I'm on the other side or what other side Hallelujah. I go to. He's able, and that's I just right. need to remember. That's right. I stopped by to tell somebody this morning that whenever you feel as though Jesus doesn't care, remember the past. Amen. And what He's done for us. That's yes. Right. And if He did it before, Hallelujah. He'll do it again. So He says, "How quickly you forget." And you don't remember. 
that I fed 5,000 with two loaves and five fishes. And I, said, and I fed the other thousands with the same portion. Come on. How quickly we forget. Mm. Yes. It's just Amen. because we're on the other side and we don't have. Mm. But Jesus is referring to the false teaching and the false doctrine of the Pharisees. Let me break down and understand, because somebody's saying right here, I hear them saying, what is leaven? Well, leaven is, is something that if it gets to the bread and ferment, uh, it spoils the bread. Mm -hmm. And so what he's saying is that their teaching is symbolic to, to leaven. Mm -hmm. If you let it get to you, the doctrine that they're presenting, which is false, it'll mess you up. Amen. So he's telling his disciples, beware of the leaven of the disciples, the, of the Pharisees, uh, because it's false teaching and false doctrine. Amen. Secretly and silently, church, but certainly the mass of dough will be messed up. He was speaking of their evil influence and not interpretation for using leaven. So here we are at our text. And here are the points of significance. Number one is public opinion. Public opinion. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Now, two words I want you to look at and focus on is Caesarea Philippi. Because as innocently as they look placed in this text, the location has great significance. Caesarea Philippi, here we have, it lies about 25 miles northeast of the Sea of Galilee. It was outside the domain of Herod Antipas, who was the ruler of Galilee and within the area of Philip the Tetrarch. The population was mainly non-Jewish and the, their Jewish uh, and their Jesus would have a peace there to teach the twelve. But that's not what I'm after. Keep listening. Watch this. Confronting Jesus at this time was one, one clamant and demanding problem. Watch this, Sheree. His time was short. His days in the flesh were numbered. The problem was uh, 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 anyone who understood him. Mm. That's the problem he was dealing with. Is there anyone who understands him? Nisi, was there anyone who had recognized him for who and what he was? Amen. Were there any who, who when he was going from the flesh, would carry on his work? Come on, church, I'm talking yeah. to us. Was there anyone who would labor for his kingdom on that? Obviously, this was a crucial problem, for it involved the very survival of the Christian faith. If there were none who had grasped the truth, Jodina, or even glimpsed it, then all his work would be undone. Mm. If there was a, some few who had realized the truth, his work was safe. So Jesus was determined to put all the tests uh, and ask his followers who they believe him mm. to be. Amen. All right. Amen. William Barclay, from, from quoting him, has it correct. It is one of the most dramatic interests to see where Jesus chose to ask this question. This is the reason why I stopped and parked the car at Caesarea Philippi. There can, there, there can be few districts with more religious associations than, than Caesarea Philippi. Watch this. The area church was scattered with temples of the ancient Syrian Baal worship. Come on, Robbie. I mean, you say amen. <laughs> And, and, and in the land, and in the book numerates no fewer than 14 such temples in the near neighborhood. Why, why is that important, Pastor? Here was an area where the breath of ancient religion was in, very, in the very atmosphere. So in other words, Jesus in the midst of all these temples and all these foreign gods. Mm. Amen. Come on. Amen. Here. Come on. here was a place beneath the shadow of ancient gods. And not only Syrian gods had their worship here. Uh, heart of uh, Caesarea Philippi, there rose a great hill in which was a deep cavern, and that cavern was said to be the birthplace of the great, there's another god called Pan, P-A-N, mm -hmm. the god of nature. So much uh, was Caesarea Philippi identified with that god that its original name was Paneus, and to this day, the place is known as Paneus. The legends of the gods of Greece gathered around Caesarea Philippi. Mm. You say that ain't much, but I'm not finished. In Caesarea Philippi, watch this church, there was a great temple of white marble built to the godhead of Caesar. Mm. It had been built by Herod the Great. Josephus, Josephus will tell us Herod adorned the place, which was already a very remarkable one, still further by the erection of this temple when he dedicated it to Caesar. That's where we get the name Caesarea. In another place, Josephus describes the cave and the temple, and when Caesar had further bestowed upon Herod another country, he built there also a temple of white marble, 
hard by the fountains of the Jordan. So watch this, the place is called Paneum, where there is the top of a mountain which is raised to an immense height at its side beneath and its bottom, a dark cave opens itself where there was a horrible principle or principle that descends abruptly to a vast depth. What am I saying all of this? It contains a mighty quantity of water. We're saying all of this to let you know that what Jesus does is in the midst of all these gods and all these temples and all these foreign deities, says to up to his disciples, who do men say I am? Amen. Public opinion. You ever ask somebody, you know where I'm going with that one. What do they think of me? <laughs> somebody up here said no. <laughs> you ever ask them, what do you think of me? You afraid of the answer? Come on. <laughs> Come on. Talk back to me. But Jesus. Knowing who he is and who his identity asks, yes. the public opinion, and so they responded, and point number next is uh, placed on a pedestal of the past. So watch this, Nicole. And the people respond in 14. Mm -hmm. They say, some thou art John the Baptist. Some say Elias or Elijah. Others say Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And so they placed Jesus on a pedestal of the past, but I stopped by to tell us and everyone listening and watching that Jesus is so much more than a pedestal on the past. Amen. Come on, Doc. Lift him up. Jesus is so much greater than John the Baptist. Yeah. He's so much greater yeah. than Jeremiah. He's so much greater than Elijah. Amen. Yeah. We need not place him on a pedestal with past prophets. He's above those that they place him on. And so he hears the, 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 the place on the pedestal of the past. And then he moves in verse 15, and I'm hastening to get to, to, to this uh, private opinion. But who do you say I am? Mm. Who do you say I am? Mm -hmm. Never mind the public opinion. Never mind being placed on a pedestal of the past. I need to know who my close in a circle say that I am into the there church this go. morning. Uh, is it afternoon yet? No. This morning, Come on. Jesus is still asking Amen. the That's same right. question. Amen. Who do you say I am? Amen. Because people come to church with the wrong agenda yes. and the wrong idea of who he is. Come on, Doc. Lift him up. Amen. He's the savior of the world. That's right. He's not a genie in a bottle that you can rub and ask for three wish, make a request. And even if he granted them neither, you can't put him back on the shelf and wait till the next three come up and you need him again. Amen. Come on, right talking. That's right. Who do you say? I am. This is a private opinion. And so Peter. Reminds me of myself with his big mouth. <laughs> I know you won't tell me that to my face, but I have a big mouth. I'll acknowledge it for you. <laughs> Henrietta will, but you won't. And has. And, 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 and I'm passionate. That's why my mouth is big. Because I'm, I'm okay. passionate about the word Amen. of God. And I'm Amen. passionate about Amen. Jesus. I'm passionate about God. I'm passionate about the Holy Spirit. And I'm passionate about the church. And I'm passionate yes. about God's people. Amen. 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 My mouth is big. That's why he gave me the gift. Amen. To lift him up. That's Amen. right. I put myself in that slot of 16, Dr. Gillison. Come on. Thou art the Christ. Yes. See, it don't sound like much because you've heard it. Thou art the son of the living God. Mm -hmm. But there are three words in that scripture, in that text, that you need to circle the word the. Mm -hmm. You would have missed this. Because thus stands for, you got to hear me, the one and only. And so when Peter Amen. acknowledges him in the midst of Caesarea Philippi with all those gods and all those religions and all those deities, you are the Hallelujah. one and only yes. Christ, the anointed one. Yes. Yes. You are the son of the living God. Amen. That's right. That's the gospel. Yes. And so Earl, to hasten this point, number three, private opinion, 
uh, and poor Peter has placed in perspective the right answer, Jesus gives promises that are offered. Oh, I couldn't wait to get to this part because I'm going to wake you up if you sleep. <laughs> and I'm sorry for putting you to sleep. But watch this. Jesus says unto him, Blessed in 617, Simon Barnas, Simon's bar Jonas, for flesh and blood have not revealed unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Yes. And I say unto you that thou art Peter. Yes. Let me clean this up, Mom Karen. And upon this rock. Yeah. Yes. It's not Peter he's talking about. Come on. Come on. Come on. The rock is that he is the Christ. That's right. That he is the Son Hallelujah. of the living God. Yeah. That's the rock he's Come building on. his. Come on, preacher. Yes. Come on. Yes. It's not Peter. It's the fact that he is the Christ. Yes. Mom, Dad, that he is the son of the living God. Amen. Upon yes. that rock, yes. he'll build his church. Here we go, Jordina. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So let me park the car and come on in the house for a minute. I've been yelling from the window at you. Uh, church is the word ecclesia. It's a church is a, is a called out assembly or group of believers. Watch this. Not in the denomination. Amen. Come on. Not in the pastor. That's right. Not in the choir. Keep going. Not in the deacon board. Hallelujah. Not in the finance room. Not in the teachers. But the believers are in Christ. Right. Yes. The church, can I help somebody? I know somebody going to call me. The church is not an organization. Amen. Amen. It's a body. Come on. It's an organism. That's right. It's a body. That's right. That's why he says, Paul tells us that there are hands and there are feet, and that there are many gifts that make up the body of Christ. That's right. The church is not a denomination. Amen. Let me help some bishops out. It's not a hierarchical system. That's right. I know someone's going to write me, but it's not. <laughs> Jesus is saying he will continue to build not on the organization, not on the denomination, not on the hierarchical system, but on the gospel message. Now watch this, and the gates of hell shall so not, not prevail against the church. That's right. Amen. Amen. Let me clean this up, because some folks got this twisted. It's not that like the, hate, the gates of hell are trying to take out the church. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to get it close on. I like this. Mm. Don't ever think that the gates of hell are trying to take out the church. Mm -hmm. Come on now. It's the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Trying to take out. Yeah. The gates of hell. Amen. Ah, don't miss that. Too long on that. That verse has been fought like hell is prevail, going to prevail against the church. They don't stand a chance. That's right. It's the church. Amen. That's right. That will take out the gates of hell. Amen. Yes. That's why the gates of hell can't prevail because the church is going to take them out. Amen. Come on, preacher. Yeah. That's too much, Russell. That's too much for me. Uh, it's not, you don't have to worry about Satan coming up here and running nothing. That's right. Hallelujah. <laughs> nothing. So when folks who get here are here, I'm going to look at your neighbor <laughs> and want to raise H E double L. <laughs> They'll never prevail. That's, That's right. right. Come on. Better talk that talk. Amen. You just walk the walk. That's Amen. right. Amen. Amen. I find out folks will try you. Yeah. Say stuff around you to get you to buy in like the Sadducees and the Pharisees, and they don't even like you. Amen. Amen. Listen, listen, listen. You have conversation every now and then around yeah. church folk. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Gates of hell are not trying to take out the church. They can't. It's the church who will prevail against the gates of hell. Yes. The church is on the attack. Yes. Joe Dina, this is heavy. <laughs> the church is on the attack against hell, and hell shall not prevail. Jesus is saying that the kingdom of Satan shall not be able to prevail against the church who is preaching, let me qualify it, and living the gospel message. Amen. You want to know why hell break loose in all every other church? Because they're not preaching the gospel. That's right. Come on now. Who are they living the gospel? Come on. Right. Satan can't win. He can't. 
That's right. He's already defeated. Hallelujah. Right. Right. Lift him up. I'm open my head up now. That's right. Square my shoulders, Karen. Right. He's already defeated. That's right. I'm not trying to beat him running. He's a loser. Amen. You don't run against a loser. You run and can win your own race. Let me help somebody out with this. Amen. Jesus says the kingdom of Satan shall not be able to prevail against the church who is preaching and living the gospel message. <laughs> Satan is not concerned. Can I help somebody? He's not concerned. He's not upset nor worried today because there are too many churches who don't preach the gospel message Amen. in exchange for sugar, flare, fluff, yep. smoke and mirrors, self-help. Right. Right. Come, right. Come on, Pastor. Come on. Come on. He's not concerned about that. That's right. Let me park in self-help and put it in reverse. You know? If we could help ourselves, we would have no need for Emmanuel, God with us. Hallelujah. Come on. That self-help gospel and they scared to talk about sin and, 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 and repentance and, and scared the offering going to be effective. No. The gospel message is that he is the son That's of the living right. God. That's right. Come on. And upon that rock. That rock. Yeah. Amen. He'll build his church. Yes. How much time do I got, Dr. Gillis? Much you want. Well, keep going. <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me help someone because I don't want you to get confused and my notes are telling me bring this point clear. The church is not the brick and mortar. That's right. right. Amen. So, so that means, pastor, preacher, deacon, doctor, Bishop, that I gotta be the gospel, I gotta preach the gospel in my own life and live according to the word of God. That's right. That's the gate of and so when Satan said rise up and as long as you preaching the gospel and living the gospel life, you don't have to worry about Satan ever running Hallelujah. Come on. Too many folks, Teresa, are defeated. Only because they let Satan have his way. That's I got right. news for you that that videotape and this live uh, uh, preaching is that Jesus Amen. tells us that the gates of hell will never prevail. Amen. As Amen. long as we're preaching and living the gospel Amen. message. That's right. Amen. Jesus makes it clear yes, he does. that because Peter gave the confession and the truth yes, he that upon this rock I'll build my church. Number five. Not only is there public opinion, not only is Jesus placed on a pedestal of the past by their public opinion, the private opinion brings placed in perspective the correct words Jesus is listening for. And so Jesus gives the promise offered that the kingdom of heaven uh, shall never be overtaken by the kingdom of Satan. Amen. Here comes possessions and property. Now, this is something mm. interesting. Come on. Because I thought Jesus was just talking about the promise uh, uh, offered. Here comes possessions, Earl. And then we'll get the property in, in the last point. This is some heavy Come stuff, on. Nicole. Because people with possessions get it material things. They That's start right. thinking about houses, cars, and land. Amen. Jesus says, no, I'm not talking about those things which are temporal. Make it Jesus point. then promises them possessions and property. The possessions church are the keys to the kingdom. Hallelujah. Come on. If you ever want to get inside the keys of uh, uh, the keys to the kingdom and get inside the kingdom, all you got to do is preach and live the gospel message. That's right. Come on, Pastor. Simple as that. It buried. Just live your life as the gospel message calls for and preach to others. Thus saith the Lord, and the keys of the kingdom are in your possession. I feel like talking about Come on. that. Oh, some people are not happy with this, but I got to go on anyhow. You mean to tell me, Pastor, it's not about my lessons? No, that's just a little bit something else. It's not about your lessons. <laughs> Yeah. Not about your house. That's right. Come on. When the movies come, I can't afford to pay anyhow. Amen. Not about your clothes or the shoes. That's prosperity preaching. This is the gospel message. Hallelujah. That when you preach it, the keys of the kingdom are given to you. Jesus places them in our possession. And we have a right, church, to enter into the kingdom. 
Yeah. Come on. General kingdom authority, uh, Russell, is possession of the keys and preaching the gospel means by opening the kingdom of heaven to all believers and shutting it against unbelievers. Amen. Yeah. I never heard nobody talk that before, yeah. Pastor. Yeah. But that's what he's talking about. Amen. We have the keys to the kingdom yes. to open the gates of heaven to those who believe and shut it. Mm. Amen. Amen. Against those who don't believe. Oh, Rob Senior, I'm talking right up here. Amen. Peter preached the gospel. Watch this. So some folks don't believe me, so we got for the Missouri folks. So let me take you to Missouri and park the car and let you out. <laughs> Peter preached the gospel on the day of Pentecost. Yes, he did. And, and to the kingdom of heaven, it was open to a, a whole lot of folks. Because Peter declared what he declared in this verse before this in 16. He has the keys at Pentecost and the power, and he preached the gospel and the kingdom of heaven. The doors were opened up to those who believe. Mm -hmm. Folks shouting, hollering, slobber, Joe Dino, with this next part that will bind on heaven and but was bound on earth will bind in heaven. Jesus is talking about binding and loosing was understood by Jewish phraseology to, de to declare what is forbidden, Jesus would not allow. Amen. And what is allowed, Jesus will allow. Yeah. So there's a whole bunch of nonsense going on in this text. Folks think he can bind stuff on heaven that ain't that on, and, and on earth that ain't even in heaven. Amen. I know somebody. Come on. Yeah. We're binding here on earth, uh, Sheree, but it ain't bound in heaven. <laughs> Because Jesus ain't even listening to her that. Come on, Amen. It's based on the keys. That's it. Do you see the progression? That, that when you declare the gospel message, Jesus said, I put in your possession the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and you can open and bind, shut, and close anything that's not in my word or the gospel yeah. message. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. Everybody. Come on. We'll set somebody free this morning. That's why, Pastor, I haven't hit the lottery yet. <laughs> Come on. Ouch. Ouch. Take my feet up, me either. <laughs> the church, let me not spirit and just roam through here because I got quiet. The church of Jesus Christ is to continue the work of Jesus here on earth according, can I help somebody understand the church? The preaching of the gospel and God's will to men. Amen. That's how you get the key. That's it. Come on. He doesn't give them anybody's kit who's not going to preach the gospel and who's not going to live a Christian lifestyle to open up to those who are blind and need the light. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, whatever you loose on earth, I'll loose in heaven. Mm -hmm. I remember Jodina folks hollering and slobbing and dancing all across the aisle with that verse, but never knew what it really meant. <laughs> Jesus says, I'll loose in heaven what you loose here in the church and here on earth. Jesus then charged, and watch this and I'm closing. I hope the teachers are near done, because I'm out of time but not talking. <laughs> Jesus then charged, this is your property. <laughs> In verse 20, watch this, possessions and property, that you should tell no man mm -hmm. that he was Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. That was their property. Mm. Here's our property. You should tell everybody. Yeah, yeah. come on. Yeah. Come on. That he is yeah. Jesus yeah. the Christ, yeah. the son of the living God. Let me close because I got to go. Robbie's calling me. <laughs> Here's the quote. If heartbreak and heartache feels difficult for us, let's just say us, mm -hmm. then it should. Maybe that's because it is. Maybe what we're facing is identity crisis. And the only way to move past that is to turn back to who God says we are. Hallelujah. Come on. So I wanted to find out in the scriptures as I close this text, what does God, or, or who do God say we are? Who am I? Yeah, yeah. God says that we are his children. Yeah. That's right. God says that we're saved by grace through faith. Yeah. God says that we're redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Yeah. God says that we are heir of eternal life. Mm -hmm. God says that we are forgiven. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. God says that we're led by the Spirit of God. Amen. God says, look, hold that we are a creature, a new creature in Christ. Old yeah. things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Does anybody have an identity crisis? God says you are redeemed from the curse of the law. God says that you're kept in safety wherever you go. Amen. God says that you're strong in the Lord and mighty in his power. Yeah. God says that we're living by faith and we're not living by sight. God says we're rescued from the dominion of darkness. God says we're justified. To us there is no guilty plea. Amen. God says we're an heir and a co-heir in Christ. God says we're blessed in every spiritual blessing. God says, does anybody have an identity crisis? I'm telling you who God says you are in Him. Come on. I wish I had some shepherds in my yes. every person under the sound of my voice. God says, by the word and your testimony and the lamb of the blood, you are an overcomer. Amen. God says, I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Yes. God says, I'm healed by his wound. God says, I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind. God says, I'm an heir to the blessings of Abraham. God says, doing all things through Christ, yeah. God says that I'm blameless and free from accusation. God says Christ Himself has set me free. God says I've been made complete in Christ. God says I've been spiritually circumcised. My old legitimate nation has been removed. God says I've been buried. Raised and met alive in Christ. Is yes. there anybody in here suffering from identity crisis? Come on. God is telling us who we be. Hallelujah. Who we are. Yeah. Yes. Yes. God says, J. Williams, I died with Christ. I've been Praise. raised with Christ. Praise. My life is now hidden with Christ yes. in God. Christ is now, now. Yes. my life. Hallelujah. Yes. I've been saved. Thank you, Lord. Set, Set apart. free. Thank you. Why not be no church folk, yes. Christian folk, let me qualify that, who don't know their identity yep. and who they are in Christ. I stop by to tell you that if you're struggling with your identity, all of us have been there. Amen. And it's not until we gave our lives to Christ, DC, that we found out who we really are. For years. <laughs> Let me share with you. I didn't grow that afro that you saw that picture of just to look good. Okay. Sometimes I do. Yeah. But, but let me help you understand. I just wanted to be like Michael Jackson. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Because singing is something. But I could sing round. All right, now. You got to have faith to believe that. <laughs> but would imitate who he was and, and try to move. I couldn't moonwalk no how. Mm -hmm. But that's what I was like. Then I grew up because I wanted to be Julius Irving, Dr. J. Yeah. Yeah. God knows I can't dunk a ball. I can't even pump it. I can barely make a layup. But there are all sorts of people. I want to be a rock star. I want to be a movie star. Hey, I want to be all those things. And God says, that's not who I created that's you to right. be. That's right. Come on. But it took all that it took and all that I went through and almost near death to let God take a hold of me Come on. and show me who I was. Hallelujah. So I'm saying to somebody, before it's too late, yes. come to Jesus. That's right. Come on. And let him give you his identity right. and who he has called you to be. This identity that I have now, there's no money in the world that could take me away from it. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Because the money will soon be spent. Yes. And the cars and the houses and all that is gone. I'd rather have Jesus yes. than silver and gold. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Been there, done that. That left, my friends left. Come on. But Jesus remained. Hallelujah. My identity is more important than my job. Tiara, if you're watching the side hustle that I have, <laughs> this is who we be. That's right. This is why we come here in this place. But it's not the brick and the mortar, it's us. That's right. Who must declare the gospel, the good news. Come on. And you have the keys to the kingdom to bind that which is on earth. You don't even have to allow any unbelievers in. And you can lose that which is on earth and lose that which is in heaven. Jesus says, I got your back, baby. Amen. Come on. 
because you preach and live the gospel message. Amen. Got no time to be talking about folk. Or how the church should run. He's already got that idea. He already knows how to do that. We just need to get in line and you find out those who don't serve are the ones talking. That's right. <laughs> Alright, Sean, shut that tape on. I said, I'm just kidding. Because if you're busy serving, the only thing you want to do is live the gospel message and help the kingdom agenda. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Your time, talent, and, and temple, and treasure. Somebody here this morning, let me come back down, who may be outside of the ark of safety. And I, you know what? I don't have to go far on a limb, Dr. Barry, to say all of us struggle with our identity before we came to Christ. Amen. I already know that. Amen. That's why we came. Those of us who were saved realized that our own flesh identity was a struggle. Yes. It was a burden. It was a hurdle. Amen. It was in the way, unless you're still living like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can do both. I can't. But the idea is that when I found out this identity that I needed in Christ set me free, Josephine, flop, flop, fit, oh, what a relief it is. <laughs> and now I don't have to play Michael Jackson. Hee <laughs> <laughs> hee. I don't have to be Julius Irving. I just need to be Don Fields. Amen. And I value you, there's only one you. That's right. That's right. That when we come into ministering and, and, and mentoring people, uh, uh, Teresa, one of the things I'll tell them right off the jump, we're not making another Don Fields. That's right. We're not creating, we're creating a Steve Stewart who God wants to use, a Jodina Murray who God wants to use, a Sean Banks, a Derek. I can't sing like Derek. That's God's identity coming through. I can't sing like you. I can't sing like Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> so I leave that to them because that's their identity in Christ. You can be the best you right. in Christ. That's right. And here's what I like about it, Sean. Nobody else can imitate Don Fields. Amen. Come on. <laughs> I'm an original, Kimmy. I think highly of my... I am. There's only one. Even my DNA. There's no other DNA like this. There's only one Don There's only one Malaysia Powell. There's only one Skip White. God wants to use all of us. That's right. But we have to preach the gospel and live his message. Amen. Amen. The identity is hidden in him. Amen. Amen. Somebody here. Wow. Maybe you've been with your identity too long. So Jesus is asking us the question, or you the question. It's a, it's a private opinion. Who do you say I am? Yes. This morning, heaven is waiting to record your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Eyes closed, head bowed. Someone's thinking about this message. And, and preacher, you know, I've been struggling with my own identity. Uh, and sometimes I, I, I even come into the church with my own game plan, my own agenda. With a wrecking ball. But we've heard this afternoon, this morning, that even when you come into this place, it's not like the gates of hell are going to prevail against the church. The church is going to win every time the church of Jesus Christ will prevail against the gates of hell. Amen. Amen. The attack is against the gates of hell, not the gates of hell attacking the church. I can't make that plain enough. And so for our lives, we are the church. I'm not talking about the brick and mortar. I'm talking about your life. Yeah. Amen. Yes. And your identity, Paul says, is hidden in him. That now, horizontally, I have peace that passes Amen. all understanding. Amen. I didn't have that identity in the flesh, but I do have it in the spirit now. I do understand, church, when 2 plus 2 is 8 in God's math, I have the peace that passes all. When my house is raging and hell is breaking loose, I still have the identity that is hidden in him Amen. and peace. No matter what the government and the politicians are doing or trying to do, I still have my identity in Jesus. That's right. Come on. 
And they are on a limited time. That's right. But somebody's here this morning who may need to exchange who they were and who God would love for them to become. We're all becoming. We're becomers. We're still working and we're still walking with Christ on this road of salvation. Amen. I want to open up the doors of the church. Come meet me right here. Nobody's looking. 